So what can people do if they really do want to detox themselves? It's just a meaningless statement. I mean, detox is not... There's no detox chapter in a medical textbook, unless I missed the lecture. There's no such thing as the detox system. There's this whole complex interlocking web of your body taking in all the stuff it needs and breaking it down and building it up into other stuff. And, you know, there are some waste products, but sometimes they're waste products and sometimes they're not. It's an arbitrary... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a, it's not a meaningful scientific term. It's a, it's a marketing device that's been invented by a bunch of quacks with, with magic pills, potions and slightly childish rituals to sell you. Um, the reality is, you know, what they're promising if you take a step back, is an increase in uh, immediate sort of sense of well-being and in the long term sort of improved long-term health outcomes. And you don't need magic rituals and you don't need magic pills for that. You know, if you want to feel more energetic and lively now, then you need to have a regular sleep-wake cycle and do more exercise. Like, there's actually pretty good evidence that uh, having a little bit of exercise regularly in your life improves your general sense of well-being and how energetic you feel. And that's not just for depressed people, that's, that's for everybody. Uh, and if you want to improve your, your long-term health outcomes, then, you know, 24 hours of detoxing with a pill or, or, or a childish ritual where the water goes brown or the five-day boots detox with the magic science looking vials isn't going to do anything for you. Uh, health risk behaviours have an impact on long-term health outcomes over the course of a lifetime. If you want to live longer, if you want to live a healthier life, then then you have to, you know, eat more fresh fruit and veg, get more exercise, watch how much alcohol you drink, uh, avoid smoking, and watch your weight. And even then, the great tragedy is, you know, maybe you will die young, maybe you will get cancer, maybe you will get heart disease, because actually, it's quite difficult to have a meaningful impact on your long-term health risk outcomes. You know, so 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 you do it, you have a go, but uh, but you know maybe maybe actually there aren't any easy answers at all, and maybe we kind of just have to deal with that. You know, I'm not I'm not bothered about individual people getting ripped off. I think what's really toxic about these uh, these sort of 24-hour magic detox pill potion things, or the boots five-day detox, or this ridiculous childish ritual where the water goes greeny brown around your feet, um, is is mainly the kind of opportunity cost. The fact that they're, they're selling this idea of of a quick fix for uh, for both sort of short-term well-being and long-term health outcomes, which is just massively unrealistic and childishly unrealistic. Prince Charles's, uh, what's it called, Dutch Originals through Nelson's Healthcare, this sort of, this ridiculous sort of detox potion that he sells, he gets so close to the mark, he says, um, you know, uh, like a lot of people I feel that these days uh, there are a lot of problems with really unhealthy lifestyles that people have, and you think this is really great, you know, the future king of England is really on the money here, he's going to say that, uh, that social inequality uh, across the world correlates really, really significantly with how much uh, ill health there is in the country or how many mental health problems there are in the country. He's, he's recognising that social inequality is pretty much the primary determinant of ill health. He recognises the value of, 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 of exercise and, and eating lots of fresh fruits and veg throughout a whole lifestyle. But no, the answer from the future King of England to your health problems is a fucking magic potion. I mean, it's like something out of a fairy tale. I mean, you know, I'm kind of in two minds about what can you do to detox, because basically, the whole notion of detox as a, as a sort of... It's a physiological system that was invented by marketers, by people peddling pills and magic solutions and childish rituals in which your feet go brown. And you seriously have to have a look at this, by the way, because that is fantastic sludge. Nasty. That is good shit, isn't it? Um, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is, you have to sort of take a step back and go, what are these people really promising? And they're promising an increase in sort of short-term sense of well-being and improved long-term health outcomes. But if, if you want to improve your, 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 your immediate sense of physical well-being, then you just need to do some exercise and go to bed on time. You know, I mean, there's actually fairly good evidence that, uh, that, that having regular exercise improves general sense of well-being and how energetic you are, um, uh, and that's in everyday people, you know, not just people who are depressed. If you want to improve your long-term health outcomes, then... Uh, I mean, the trouble is, 
you don't want to get caught up in the same game of over-promising that the detox people are doing. You know, so there's reasonable evidence that eating more fresh fruit and veg, getting more exercise, not smoking certainly, drinking less and not being overweight are certainly correlated with better long-term health outcomes. And so you'd probably be fairly well advised to do that. Now, on the other hand, you know, you're only ever shaving risks off, so there are no guarantees. And I think a lot of the time what people want is... Is, is promises uh, uh, and guarantees. I think the last thing that's, that's really difficult to get your head around is if, if you want people to change their behaviours and live in a more healthy way, then actually it, it, it turns out that just telling them to do that actually doesn't really work very well at all. I mean, in this, this whole sort of individualist project of getting individual people to, to make their own changes to their own lives, I think is, is fundamentally pretty flawed. If, if you want to improve the health of the nation, if you want to get people living more healthily, then you have to act at a societal level. You have to find ways of making uh, London as cycle-friendly as Milton Keynes without being as boring. You have, to, you have to produce enabling environments that encourage people to live in healthier ways. You have to change life-work balance so that people can get home and cook a family meal from, from fresh ingredients. You have to have vending machines in schools that sell fresh fruit instead of chocolate bars that can sit in there for nine months without going off. So the greatest danger of all this stuff is that it's just a distraction. You know, you, it's a distraction from what you could really do to improve your own health. You think you're doing something useful with these childish rituals when actually you're not, and so you might neglect to make meaningful changes in your life. But also, finally, it's a distraction from the real social determinants of ill health.